Hello and welcome to our office hour webinar. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes, but until then, if you'll find your control panel, open up that question box and share with us where you're joining from today. It's always so fun to see where everyone's joining from for these office hour webinars. So you'll find that control panel. It's a orange rectangle with a white arrow. You can click on that to open it or expand it, and then you'll find the question box. So I'm joining today from uh, the greater New Orleans area. Let's see, we have Ronald joining from Hawaii. Welcome. Looks like Clark's from New York. Uh, Michelle from Indiana. Guy's joining us from uh, North Dakota. Welcome. Have any of y'all been experiencing the cold front that's moving across the country? It just came through New Orleans today. So a little colder than normal. Had to bust out a sweatshirt for this morning. But I see we have a few more people who just joined us. So if uh, you just joined us, find that control panel, open up that question box, share with us where you're joining from today. We have people from Hawaii to New York and uh, from North Dakota down to Louisiana. It's always fun to see where everyone's joining from. We'll give everyone just a couple more minutes to join us and get started. There's quite a few people jumping on right now. So as you jump on, if you'll find that control panel button that's orange rectangle with the white arrow, click on that, open up that question box and share with us where you're joining from today. That would be great. Hope your week's going well. I can't believe it's already the last day of October and tomorrow is November 1st. This year is going by so fast. Crystal, welcome from uh, Las Vegas. Glad you're here with us. We have a couple more people jumping on right now. We're glad you're here. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. It looks like we have all the time zones covered today. People from the west to the east and the north to the south. All right. Well, it is time to get started. So welcome to Create a Culture of Thinking. Uh, this PD session may be unlike any you have participated in before. So you will need your trusty smartphone or something to scan QR codes, so grab that. Um, also, I always say pull those seat belts fast because this is gonna be the quickest, about 25, 26 minutes um, that you'll experience. And it's very interactive. So this session does rely on participant interaction to be successful. So get ready to engage with and learn with and from each other during the session. So first up, you're gonna grab that trusty smartphone or device that you can scan a QR code. I'll put the link in the chat in just a moment. But you're gonna answer this response once you scan that QR code with your question, um, camera app. So imagine if we could create this culture of thinking. How can we create a culture of thinking? So scan that QR code, the link is going in the chat right now, and share with us how we can create a culture of thinking. So we're all educators, how can we create a culture of thinking with our students and with our learners? And maybe even with our coworkers, right? There's so many different possibilities here. So you have the QR code that you can scan with the camera app on your smartphone or device, the link is in the chat, so you could click on the link to access the Mentimeter. We are using Mentimeter, which is a free ed tech tool, has lots of different answer um, response types. But let's see how we could start to create a culture of thinking. All right, and we'll give it just a second to load. So don't forget that link is in the chat if you need it still. So imagine if we created a culture of thinking, how can we do that? Let's see. 
So we have a few responses starting to come in. You could pose vague questions for discussion. We could create maybe some open-ended type questions um, where students think for themselves. They maybe don't have a closed-ended question. We could ask a question, absolutely. Um, we could understand the demographics of our students and know that we all have different social identities. That's very true. You know, I love professional development. And one thing we always talk about in my live in-person sessions is we are all expert educators and have really great experiences from our life. And we can bring all that to the classroom. And that's what makes us so cool. And this is such a, create such a cool learning environment that we can learn with and from each other. So these are some ways that we can start to create that culture of thinking, right? So I've seen some themes here about questions, uh, understanding our students, knowing where they come from. Um, let's see what else we have going on. So my name is Mandy Green, manager of PD and ID with Goodhart Wilcox. Today, we're just gonna explore three simple strategies to help start to create that culture of thinking. So we're going to start with a basic premise today. Um, as a reminder, this session is being recorded. You will receive a link to the recording 24 hours after the live event. And in the download section, you'll find your certificate of attendance. And I also uh, linked in there today an example of one of the thinking routines that we're going to go through. So if you want, you can go ahead and download those now or get them after the session. But let's start with this idea of thinking routines. So what are thinking routines? So normally I like my first activity of these webinars to kind of be a group definition of what we're focusing on that day. But we're gonna start with this for today, for the sake of time. Thinking routines could be like a set of questions or a sequence of steps used to really help scaffold and support our students in thinking. They're really designed to help kind of deepen student thinking, help make our thinking visible. And they really help students notice and name particular thinking moves. So we're gonna kind of use this as our premise. It comes from the Project Zero, uh, which is part of the Harvard Graduate School of Education, work on thinking routines and making thinking visible. So we're gonna go with this kind of as our basic assumption for today as a group, as we move forward. So we just did imagine if. Imagine if we could create this culture of thinking. Now this thinking routine has four additional questions that you can ask. For the sake of time, we're gonna take it a little slow today, but I'm gonna explain this thinking routine. So the first one is, what's the purpose of Imagine If? So this routine really helps our students investigate either an object or a system or a new idea, right? They even might be redesigned by identifying new ideas, inviting divergent and convergent thinking. How could you use this in your classroom? So I used it kind of today as an engage activity to get us going. But this routine can actually be used to help explore the possibilities of improving or tinkering or tweaking some type of object or system. You know, while it's really important for our students to generate ideas within this wide open possibility space, sometimes as educators, it's helpful for us to place those constraints or even those creative type constraints on that space that we're asking our students to generate questions and ideas from. So this is imagine if. So next, this one is called see, think, me, and we. So we're gonna go back to those responses on that Padlet for just a moment. And we're going to see them. We're gonna make some observations. We're going to think about them. We're going to look at the me, how they connect to us, and how they connect to we, the greater or bigger picture. All right, so let me jump back over to that palette where we had a couple of responses come in. So for this one, we're gonna use our screen that you're viewing right now for our data. And then in that question box is where you're going to type your response. So where you typed your response about where you're joining the webinar from, is where you're gonna type the response for the next part of this. So when we look at these responses on the screen, what do you notice about the responses on the screen? I'll give you about 30 or 45 seconds 
type in the question box to share with others what you notice on the screen with the responses. What do you see? So don't forget to open up that question box. That's where you can type your response as we get to learn with and from each other. As I jokingly say, there's no wrong answers in professional development because we're all learners. So when you look at the responses that we have on the screen, what do you see? So I made some observations earlier where I said I see the word question in there. So that's a common theme that I see or an observation I could make about these responses. What do you see on the screen? Type that in the question box of the control panel. And then share with us. So we have some coming in, so some creative thinking. Um, they notice on the screen the word questions and a theme of understanding, absolutely. I notice the same thing. I see the word questions a lot up there. There's a couple of check for understanding, so that theme of understanding is coming out as well. What else do you see on the screen? I'll give you a couple more seconds. Looks like we have another one typing maybe. All right, we're gonna stay on the screen that you see with our responses from the Mintimeter. And we did C. Now we're going to move to think. So now that you made observations about what you saw on the screen, what thoughts do you have about the responses on the screen? So one thought I have, so I noticed the word questions a lot. So my thought is I think a lot of instructors are using different types of questioning to help create a culture of thinking among our students and our learners. So what do you think about what you see on the screen? I'll give you about 45 seconds to put that in the question box so that we can learn with and from each other. Like I said, these are highly interactive sessions that really depend on participation of the participants to be successful. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to put what you think in the box. So we have a couple coming in right now. So feel free to keep typing if you're typing. We'd love to see everyone's response. So things that we th we're thinking about now, like questioning provides the expectation around thinking while learning and pushing the self uh, to think critically themselves to further uh, their own thinking and learning, absolutely, without the push of the teacher to do so, exactly. And Clark, that kind of goes with our, um, Definition that we read earlier from the Project Zero to provide cap scaffolding and support for our students as well. Yep, absolutely. So this is our think. And now we're gonna move to the next quadrant. So the next question is, what connections can you make with the responses on the screen? So we're connecting the responses on our screen to ourselves. What connections can you make? So one connection I can make is, yes, as an educator, I try to use open-ended questions to really create a culture where my students felt comfortable talking and discussing about content um, by answering questions. I try to use the questions to scaffold their learning. Um, that's how I brought the questioning and creating the culture of thinking to myself. Even in everyday uh, life, I try to ask open-ended questions when I meet people, 
um, to really be curious about others. So how can you make connections to yourself with what you see on the screen with those five responses on our Mintimeter? So this is the me aspect. So we did see, we did think, and now we're gonna do me. And if you want an additional handout, in the handouts folder, there is a see, think, me, we chart that can help um, also guide during this process. If you want to download that now, that's fine. But what connections can you make to yourself with the information on the screen? And then the last one, maybe that one's too personal, maybe some vulnerability, I totally get it, is we. So what connection can we make in response to these comments that we see on the screen that help connect us to a bigger purpose, right? <clears throat> so with the we, how can we connect to a bigger purpose with these questions? So we have one coming on me, adjust the central questions and check for understanding questions to meet scholars identities absolutely allows time and space to facilitate their own learning by asking questions as a norm yep classroom open conversation yes steve absolutely i have one professional development that's um geared towards facilitating classroom discussion and then we talk about this classroom is going to have to be all 20 30 40 50 students conversing at the same time or can it be small groups right so really understanding our um scholars our students and their needs absolutely any other connections to the we the bigger picture you would like to share i'll give you about 30 more seconds or so i know this one's a little more difficult to type in those question box the next one will be a lot easier so yeah, so Steve and Clark, thank you so much. Putting students into groups when they're a lab. Yep, separate them a bit, absolutely. Really deepen our culture of thinking in the classroom by utilizing these skills listed, absolutely. All right, so these are all ways that we can make connections in our classroom using the see, think, me, we uh, thinking routine. So this is a thinking routine. And you're probably like, what is this? All right. So this thinking routine really helps promote a deeper understanding and really tries to encourage the, and facilitate conversation because it does have questions already in there for you. It really is aiming to scaffold the thinking process by breaking it down into manage, manageable chunks. Um, and that's what really helps facilitate that classroom conversation. We also know from research that sometimes when students interact uh, with one partner or a smaller group, they're more likely to engage than if they're asked by the whole group. We also know that when we take content and we break it into chunks, it helps our students increase comprehension and kind of decreases that learner fatigue. So this routine does all of those things as well. And what's great about it is it can be applied to so many different situations. Anything from analyzing a piece of art or a piece of an automobile to a historical event or child development. It can be applied to any content area. So let's break down the four stages that you see on the screen. So the C phase, what is this C phase? This is where students really are asked to make um, observations about what they see in front of them, very objective observations. Then they move into the think phase. And this is where it moves from observation to more interpretation. So this is where that analytical thinking really comes into play. From more than like, what do I literally see? It becomes, what do I think about what I see? Then you can move into the me phase. And this is where Students, learners, participants can really reflect on their own personal connections to what they've observed and what they've thought. You know, questions in this phase could include things like, what does this remind me of? How does this connect to my own experiences or my own ideas or my own feelings? So this focus here is on the me stage is really introspective and of personal relevance. Because we know making those connections helps internalize content and helps us interact with content in so many more different ways than just reading or observing. Then we move into that last phase of we. We encourages our students to really think about their observations, their thoughts, and their feelings in a much broader context on this content we're observing. This could mean how a community or a group 
would perceive a content or a subject area. There's really an aim here in this one to start to promote some of that social thinking and to consider multiple perspectives. So this thinking routine is called See, Think, Me, We. And there is a brief uh, little handout image in the handout section of the webinar if you want some more on this one. All right, so let's scan one more QR code. On this one, you're going to scan that QR code and it's going to take you to a Padlet. And I'll put the link in the chat in just a moment. Now, if you're on the Padlet on your laptop, on a, sorry, on your desktop or a computer laptop, um, you'll see the screen and you'll just click on the plus sign. If you're on a mobile device, it's going to look like what you see on the screen, but you're going to click the plus sign right underneath the question. So this next thinking routine is called take note. And when you open the Padlet, you're going to find four columns. The link is in the chat, so you can use it on a desktop or laptop. There's also the QR code that you can scan with the camera app of your smartphone. And when you get there, we'll open up the Padlet. And you can read the questions at the top of each of the four columns and start to type your response in below. Now, your responses are going to be completely anonymous in this activity. We know anonymity increases student engagement and participation. So click the plus sign below each question and start to type in your response to that question. I'll give you just a second to scan that QR code. Don't forget the link is in the chat. And then we'll jump in the Padlet to see some of your responses. So I am using the free version of Padlet. But as always, check with your Oh, school or organization, IT departments, to make sure you can use it with your students and on your network. And I think I already have one open. As you can see at the top, there's some little bugs that tell you people are working on this one. So don't forget the link is in the chat. You can click on that. It will open it up in your a new tab on your uh, desktop or laptop. So there's four questions here. We're going to go through and answer four of each of the questions, and I'll give you about a minute to type your responses in right now. All right, for the sake of time, because we have eight minutes left, I'm going to start going through the responses. Please feel free to continue to complete as many as you can in the next. We'll be on this activity for two or three minutes. So what's the most important point you've heard today about thinking routines, right? Asking questions, engaging students, thinking about the see, me, think, me, we. Um, the me aspect is crucial to relatability, right? That personal relevance, introspectiveness of the activity. Yes. Uh, what are you finding challenging, puzzling, or difficult to really understand about thinking routines? Like how to get everyone to participate, right? That's something we run into all the time in education. doesn't matter if we're teaching like pre-K or we're teaching adults, right? We all struggle with that engagement piece. Um, yeah, teaching into see, think, me, we in a fun way where scholars don't think it's lame. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe that you don't have to present all four quadrants at one time. Maybe you could present one at a time different parts of the class period, et cetera. Um, what questions would you like, most like to discuss about thinking routines? So bringing the class together, right? So maybe ways that we could scaffold, <coughs> um, ways that we could really make sure everyone is participating, going back to the one in the column before, right? So there's different ways to add accountability. Um, and that's what's great about us all being expert educators is we have lots of experiences. And sometimes that involves writing, sometimes that involves video responses, sometimes that involves rubrics, et cetera, right? So there's different ways that we can get people involved, increase accountability in a meaningful way, right? So we're not just making people accountable for the sake of being accountable, but so there's some type of learning taking place. So the last one is, um, what is something you found interesting about thinking routines, right? It pushes students thinking, 
uh, can be used throughout a lesson or even an assignment, right? So these thinking routines, there's tons of them and they can be used at any point of a lesson. So I like to use the 5E model to kind of design lessons and professional development. And what's great is they fit in all the 5Es from engage to explore, to explain, to evaluate, to extend. They fit in all of those areas, absolutely. So this is take note. So you could do these columns digitally. You could have them on different posters and do a print version. Uh, you could have them on a Google Doc or a DocX file where students could complete as well. So there's many different ways that you could take this take note thinking routine and personalize it for your content. All right, so what is this one? So this routine is really enhanced, is really designed to enhance students' memory and engagement of ideas by focusing on what's capturing the heart and really distilling key issues and questions after a learning experience rather than in the middle of it, which is why it was at the end of today's professional development session. It really allows our participants and our learners uh, to fully know that there are times where they can consolidate their learning afterwards. This one can be used right at any point of really a learning experience. And it can be used with anything from a discussion to a video, to a lecture, to even a lab. And it can be done, I like it at the end of a class period as a reflection, like an exit ticket. Because that third question that asks what uh, questions do you still have that you wanna discuss, that would be my notice as an instructor of things I might need to follow up on on the next class period or come back to to reteach. So it could be used as an exit ticket as well. All right, so the three that we explore today, imagine if, see, think, me, we, and then take note. These are all on the Project Zero website. You can just Google Project Zero thinking routines and it'll pop up. It's from the Harvard Graduate School of Education and they're all free. All right, so let's start to wrap this up. I do work for Goodhart Wilcox Publishing Company and if you would like uh, a textbook, a preview of a textbook, you can scan that QR code and we will be in touch with you, a sales rep, so that you can receive a copy of a textbook that you need. I also put all the links in the chat that we're about to cover. So feel free to scan that, the link is in the chat. Also, if you like PD, we have a PD page, you can scan that QR code there. There's a video to show you what it looks like in person. There's some free resources, free instructional strategies, free webinars that you can watch. Lots of great stuff there. The link is in the chat. The g-w.com forward slash PD is the website. Feel free to go there. Also, this is our last Office Hour webinar until uh, January 2nd of 2024. We will be changing platforms. And so we have some testing to do to make sure the platform that we're changing to can still provide the same great experience and even better experience than we have currently. And so to do that, we're gonna be taking the next four or five weeks to really uh, test that platform and make sure it works. But until then, you can scan the QR code or click the sign up link that uh, says GWPD News in the chat. You can fill out the form, click on the PD button and click subscribe and you'll receive our monthly newsletter so that you'll stay in, uh, up to date on our next webinar and get the email and the registration and all that great stuff to our new platform. Um, on January 2nd of 2024. So feel free to sign up for our PD newsletter. We'd love to stay in touch with you as we test out our new platform for our office hour webinars that will be starting in 2024. So we will miss you until then, but sign up for our newsletter and we'll see. You can also sign up on our website. And with that, we have two minutes left. I would love to answer any questions. Also feel free to email me if you have questions about this or you're trying something in your classroom and it doesn't work, please reach out. I am more than happy to talk with you about it, see what we can do to make it work or make it successful in your classroom. Um, other than that, you will receive an evaluation when this webinar is over. We love to make webinars better. We love your feedback. So have a super great uh, rest of the year. We'll see you back in these office hour webinars on January 2nd, 2024. Make sure you sign up for those PD newsletters so that we can stay in touch between now and then and have a super afternoon.